It was a revolution. For us, it was a revolution. We didn't know about fellowship. We didn't know about any of this stuff. My name is Larry Beauregard, and I got saved on February 13th, 1974. It was a Wednesday night. And Jack Harris came down to preach Five Night Revival for Harold Warner. So we get down to this dumpy little building in the worst part of Tucson. Pastor Warner was leading songs. His face was red. He was just on fire. Mona was playing piano. And then standing in the front row was Jack and Patty Harris. Just those four. I sat three rows back behind them, looking at all and say, what a bunch of crazy nuts. He pulled the altar call, every head bowed. And finally, I just kind of, I went like this. God sees that hand. And my hand went down instantly. And he said, just kneel down here. And as soon as I did, Pastor Warner was over there. And by the time he was done praying, I was weeping. And I was totally free from all my sin, right on the spot. And uh, my wife, Susan, got saved uh, the 4th of July of the same year, 1974. Prescott had a Bible conference in August of 1974. But before that, I had such a burden to help people. Drugs back then was so experimental, a lot of people were getting messed up and we had no explanation for it. The only explanation I had is that Jesus could change their life. So I go to conference and the second night, Tuesday night, Al Fury preached and he preached on the call of God. That's when I went down and surrendered. I said, God, if you can at all use me, I'm all yours, and begin to weep. God gave me a vision. By that time, Pastor Warner starting to preach a little bit on discipleship because him, Ron Jones, Ron Burrell, Pastor Mitchell were talking every day about discipleship. It was a whole new thing. He began to realize, man, God's really doing something here. Things were happening. God was raising up men in our midst, and we had a lot of men in the church that all want to preach. What am I going to do with them? And then he began to formulate in his mind what to do with them. There was somebody that got saved in the Tucson church that had some relatives in Clifton. And so a few months later, um, uh, Pastor Warner was talking and Kim Pensinger and maybe sending them because they were asking for a church there. And so that's how he ended up going. He went there in May of uh, 1977, that was the first conference we had. And uh, four months later, I went to Douglas. Pastor Warner said, you know, this building's open up, you can go there and pastor, blah, blah, blah. I said, sure, I'll go. Didn't speak a word of Spanish. A week later, we were moving. So it was just something that was just in us, moving in us. Jesus could come back at any moment, we're gonna take the world. So once you had 60, 100 people like that, then everybody that came in after that, it was just normal. It just kept getting bigger. My name is Stuart Reblin and my wife is Teresa. I got saved in September uh, of 1974. My wife got saved in 1976, so we've been around for a while, and it's just a wonderful thing to see what God has done over the years. The church actually has had a number of what you could call growth spurts. Like 76 and 77, Pastor Mike Webb was saved at that time. My wife got saved then, Brenda Felix, who is now Brenda Strutz. Uh, my mom, my sister got saved. Uh, I believe Richard Kirkpatrick 
got saved, Kevin, uh, Frank Escobar, uh, Eric Strutt. I mean, there was just a number of, of individuals that were saved around the 76, 77 time frame. And then again, I think in 78, 79, and then in the early 80s, there was just another great growth spurt. We were in the, the new 40 by 80 concrete brick building on Veterans Boulevard through the 70s. And, and at that time, we were just busting at the seams. You know, the best seat in the house was on the floor right next to the altar uh, in front of the front row. And, and that way, when the altar call came, you didn't have to get up out of your seat. You just turned and bowed, you know. Uh, but the church was overflowing and it was from there that we went into Southgate. I think we were in Southgate for six years or so, and it became obvious that we couldn't stay, not only because it, it definitely had size limitations for what God was doing, but the Southgate Merchants Association didn't like the fact that we were a church in in their uh, little community of businesses. So there was a, a gap between the time that we had to exit Southgate until we occupied the building here that was completed. But we were in uh, Choi High School Auditorium, Sunnyside High School Auditorium, Pueblo High. We met at the Holiday Inn the downtown Marriott, we were in the Marriott Circle Ballroom for months. It was very challenging. I think at one point, I remember correctly, we uh, met in six different locations on six respective Sundays. But when you think about that season, and you think about the New Testament church following the day of Pentecost, they didn't have a church building. The scripture tells us they would meet in the temple and they would preach and teach. But it also says they went house to house. And, and it was that truth, Acts chapter 2, Pastor Warner was inspired to establish what we call house to house ministries. You know, it's been exciting to see over the years just how God, and like the scripture says, he adds daily unto the church such as should be saved. There, are, there were definite plateaus, if you will, of growth, maturity, growth, maturity, growth, maturity, etc., and growth of individual ministry functions and gifts operating. My name is Alvin Smith. My wife is Renee Smith. I got saved June the 25th, 1981. I actually got saved on the Air Force Base. God did a miracle in my life, and here I am today. I think the revival actually uh, ignited around about 1981, 82. I remember one time we were on the Air Force Base and we were having a, um, I think it was like a blackout or something and everybody came outside. There were people gathered around. I said, man, this is a, it's a great time to preach. So we just start preaching, man, like street preaching on the Air Force Base. It was that kind of spirit, that kind of uh, a momentum that God had given us on the Air Force Base and, and uh, we, were, we were fired up man, for Jesus. It was a very powerful time. One thing about military guys is that, you know, they're, they're transient. They can be gone, you know, at any time. And the gospel is, is transient. It, you never know where you're going to be. You never know the, the opportunities, the open doors that God gives you. God has used the guys in the military in a profound way in our fellowship to touch, you know, the uttermost parts of the world. You know, people like Pastor Marty Carnegie, uh, Steve Anderson, Myself, we've gone to various places and God has used our lives uh, to, to, to spearhead revival. You know, back in the late 70s when the U of A had a revival, 
you know, and it was Tom Trubisky and Eric Strutz and, and all the guys and gals. That was just very organic. It just, it happened. And that, that's, you talk about entering into other people's labors, you know. Whoever's on the campus now, you know, they have that opportunity to just kind of go in, into that flow. Same with high school, same with junior highs. My name is Paul LaValle, and I came to Tucson in the summer of 1984 and locked in as a disciple. Summer of 1986, uh, Pastor Warner asked me and my wife Norma to take over. At that time, it was called the Young People's Bible Study. And there was uh, three other couples, I, I call it the Fab Four. It was me and Norma, Ed and Julie Gutierrez, uh, Johnny and Ellie Martinez, and uh, Junior and Marie Trinidad. We would go, uh, we would get the church vans, go pick up kids, bring them to the church, preach to them, and then drive them home. What had happened is a lot of the kids that we started working with since 1986, 87, 88, they started graduating from high school. A lot of them started going to the U of A. So it was just a natural development to create something at the U of A. We call it Alpha Omega. You know when something's inspired, uh, it lasts, and so it's still going strong today. Uh, my name is Mike Webb, and my wife Mary and I have been in the church for 48 years now, and uh, Music was such a big deal for us back in those times. I mean, our whole lives wrapped around music. You go to a football game, there's music. You go to a concert, to a dance, uh, those were our life. And so if a band was playing, we paid attention to that. We looked at it and uh, we were drawn to it. And so I think music became such a central part of the Jesus movement. The first time I got stoned, Music was playing in the background, uh, and when I got saved, music was playing. It was uh, an instrument that God used to draw us, and it was as I listened to music that I started to get convicted, and Jesus made himself real to me. And so it was at a concert, uh, I think it was a Saturday night music scene, that I gave my life to Jesus. I'm Frank King, and my wife Susan and I got saved on August 1st, 1975. We were some of the some of the big revival that happened when they knocked down the wall and made the Church on Veterans double the size it was. We got involved in children's ministry about four years later. For a period of time, we did children's church every single service. So there's little bits and pieces that we remember, and they're very vivid in our memory. But the the decades were sort of so pushed together. And a lot of times it's just this blend of, of little scenes and such. And you know, the first child to be filled with the Holy Spirit during one of our children's church services, uh, the, the children stand, stepping up and moving into positions of leadership within the children's ministry. You know, back in 1990, we did a, an exercise of asking everybody in the children's church to pretend they're going into the future 20 years and taking a picture of the children's ministry. And the picture people took were kids preaching, kids as parts of music groups, you know, kids who were in leadership and out on outreaches. God gave us that vision. And then as we worked within his plan, that vision came to pass. 
You know, I was looking the other day uh, up on the altar and I was looking at the worship team and the man sitting in the chair that was going to be preaching next and the person who was leading the worship service and most of the musicians and they were all children's church kids. And to see God using those little kids, excuse me. But to see God using those little children and raising them up uh, to their position in the church, that's a, that's a great joy. The church is a generational thing. It's always been. Youth are, you know, that's the key to a church, to any church. One, because they'll be around to tell the story, but also because God uses young people that have lots of energy in order to bring forth the gospel. So I grew up in church dedicated by Pastor Warner. I was a baby when my parents were pastoring and I didn't really remember a lot of that, but I just remember Children's Church and just growing up with those foundations that I didn't realize until I got saved that was always in me. And it was like when I came back, um, I was 27, everything just clicked. And I just felt like I um, never left. My name is Roman Moreno. I got saved in 2017. November. My name is Mariah Moreno, and I got saved September 11th, 2001. My parents were Pastor Steve and Shirley Anderson that were uh, announced to Russia, Kostromal, Russia, and then later uh, Ventuk, Namibia, and then Ukraine and Kyiv. When I was a kid, if you can just put yourself in my shoes, like, this is how it's always going to be. We are out showing kind of the light of God, and it doesn't matter what's going to happen to us because we're on a mission. I remember the times struggling and going through things overseas where you feel like you're so alone, but I knew that there is someone um, caring for us and being there for us and coming home to conferences and having that feeling and that sense of belonging and that family, that extra family that you get. The conference center really is a place where uh, the local church uh, who has invested in workers in which they have sent out uh, to go preach the gospel. It is a time where we are able to come back and just give God the glory for what he's done and to bring help and health to those workers who have been laboring uh, very diligently. And, and, and it's a time of refreshing, but also it's a time just to uh, reflect on the, the faithfulness of the congregation that has stood in prayer, that has stood in, in sacrificing their finances, and that have held the ropes like we like to say. What's so special about this congregation and the people in this church is like, whatever walk of life I go through, I know I have four or five people from this church that I can count on. Those relationships, those bonds, They'll go through the thick and thin with us and with me through life is really important. The thing that I, I see in the church that I'm so grateful for that God's doing now is that he's still changing lives. You just see people 
get careers and go into ministry and, and get families and become members of society and those things that the world can never do for people, the church is, is helping God do that. You know, obviously, I know for all of us, we're, we're thankful for Pastor Warner and Mona. You know, and having the same pastor for 50 years, or close to 50 years, at least for me, is, is a wonderful thing. Thankful for the people of God, relationships, and just the privilege of being part of something that God has done and is still doing. And just looking back at God's faithfulness in my life, in our family's life for decades is just, uh, it's amazing to see what he's done. Pastor Mitchell always said, uh, what we have here is not a work of man, it is a work of God. And to play a little part in that is an incredible blessing. I could not have spent my life any better than I have spent it. It's the individual that says yes, the individual who gives, the individual who makes that decision. It's limitless what God can do. If one person would just say, yes, I want to give to this. I want to be a part of this. There's a sense of urgency. There's a sense of duty. There's a sense of use my talents, Lord. There's a sense of where could this take us in, in the next future? I'm so excited. But if we stick to just knowing who God is and seeking those who are lost, that's, that's what I'm grateful for. What an incredible thing that uh, God scripted me into what He's doing on planet Earth and scripted us, you know. Who would have thought Veterans Boulevard, the wrong side of town, uh, that God would uh, use a man in a wheelchair uh, coming to town uh, to reach the world. Uh, only God could come up with something that beautiful.